the NASA nap and the adenosine flush. Let's start with the smallest unit of sleep that actually functions as a biological hack, the 10 to 20 minute window. This isn't about being lazy, it's about exploitation of a biological loophole. To understand why this specific duration is a hidden advantage, you have to understand the chemical trash that is currently accumulating in your skull. Adenosine. From the moment you woke up today, your neurons have been firing, consuming energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The byproduct of this consumption is pure adenosine. Think of it as metabolic exhaust. As this chemical builds up, it binds to specific receptors in your brain, creating what scientists call sleep pressure. It is the biological signal for fatigue. It's not that you are tired. It's that your brain is chemically signaling that the tank is full of sludge. The advantage of the 10 to 20 minute sleep window, often branded as the power nap or the NASA nap after a 1995 study on pilots, is that it is long enough to unbind a significant amount of free adenosine from your receptors, but, and this is the critical glitch, it is short enough to prevent you from entering stage three slow wave sleep. If you sleep for 30 minutes, you risk sleep inertia, that feeling of waking up with a brain full of cotton wool because you interrupted a deep cycle. But at 20 minutes, you are strictly in stage one and light stage two sleep. You're essentially clearing the cache without shutting down the operating system. The NASA study found that this specific duration improved performance by 34% and alertness by 100%. This is the hidden advantage of the microsleep. It acts as a non-chemical stimulant. Unlike caffeine, which merely blocks the adenosine receptors, masking the fatigue, a 20-minute sleep actually reduces the levels of the chemical itself. You aren't tricking the dashboard, you're actually refilling the tank. For the high-functioning lean-back viewer, this is the only short sleep that carries a biological ROI, or return on investment, without a penalty tax. 2. The Ubermensch Paradox and the Polyphasic Trap We move into the territory of the polyphasic dreamers, the realm of da Vinci, Tesla, and modern Silicon Valley biohackers who attempt to survive on two hours of sleep a day, broken into 20-minute chunks every four hours. This is the Ubermensch schedule. The hidden advantage here is theoretically time abundance, but the biological reality is a horrifying lesson in efficiency born of desperation. When you restrict sleep to this degree, two hours total per day, the body undergoes a frantic adaptation known as REM rebound. Usually, it takes a human about 90 minutes to cycle down into rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep. However, the brains of polyphasic sleepers, starved of this critical restorative phase, eventually learn to glitch directly into REM the second they close their eyes. They bypass the light sleep and deep sleep architecture entirely to prioritize the psychological save state mechanism of REM. The advantage here is a terrifying kind of lucid efficiency. You are technically keeping the biological machine running and you gain roughly 20 years of waking life compared to an average human. However, this comes at a steep cognitive price. While you retain basic motor function and short-term reactivity, your divergent thinking, the ability to connect unrelated concepts, which is the root of creativity, evaporates. You become a highly efficient automaton. Historical accounts of figures like Buckminster Fuller, who tried the Dymaxion cycle, suggest that while they were productive, they became socially erratic and emotionally volatile. The hidden advantage of the two-hour cumulative cycle is that it proves the brain's plasticity. It will rewrite its own source code to keep you alive. But make no mistake, you are running a high-performance engine on fumes. You aren't thriving. You are successfully failing to die. The three, the drunk threshold. This is the zone where hustle culture usually lives, and it is scientifically indistinguishable from being legally intoxicated. If you are consistently sleeping three to four hours a night, you are banking on the hidden advantage of manic cortisol. Here's the mechanism. When the body realizes it isn't getting enough restoration, it assumes you're in a survival scenario. 
Evolutionarily, if you aren't sleeping, a predator must be nearby or you must be migrating. In response, your adrenal glands flood your system with cortisol and adrenaline. This creates a state of tired but wired. For the first few days or even weeks, this feels like a superpower. You feel sharp, aggressive, and strangely untired. This is the founder's high. You are riding a wave of your own stress hormones. But researchers at the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard Medical School have mapped this trajectory. After roughly two weeks on a four-hour schedule, your cognitive performance drops to the equivalent of someone with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.1%. The terrifying part? Your subjective perception of how tired you are flattens out. You think you have adapted. You believe you are one of the short sleep elite, a genetic mutation that affects less than 1% of the population on the DEC2 gene. You aren't. You are simply too sleep deprived to realize how impaired you are. The hidden advantage of this phase is purely an illusion of productivity fueled by a biological loan shark. You are burning through your physiological capital. The glitch here is that your brain turns off the I'm tired warning light just before the engine blows. It's useful for short-term survival bursts like crunch time or finals week, but as a lifestyle, it's a slow motion lobotomy. Four, the glymphatic wash cycle. Entering the five to six hour range, we reach the realm of the functional adult. This is the glow the average for industrialized nations. You aren't hallucinating and you aren't manic, but you are missing out on the most bizarre biological cleaning process known to science, the glymphatic system. This system, only fully described in the last decade, is the brain's hidden plumbing. Here is the horror and the wonder of it. During deep, slow wave sleep, which is heavily backloaded into the first half of the night but requires duration to fully complete, your brain cells, glial cells specifically, physically shrink by up to 60%. They shrivel up to create space between the neurons. Then your brain opens the floodgates, pumping cerebrospinal fluid through your skull at a high velocity to wash away the metabolic waste products accumulated during the day. The primary waste product being scrubbed? Beta amyloid plaques, the sticky proteins that are the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. The five to six hour sleeper gets a light rinse, not a deep clean. They wake up with a percentage of yesterday's toxicity still floating in their neural pathways. The hidden advantage of pushing past this six hour mark into the seven plus territory is that you allow this wash cycle to complete. However, looking at the five to six hours specifically, the advantage is merely metabolic stabilization compared to the four hour group. You have likely achieved enough core sleep, the vital first three cycles, to prevent immediate physiological collapse. You can drive a car and hold a conversation, but biologically you are living in a house where you only take out the trash once a month. It doesn't smell yet, but the clutter is accumulating in the corners. Number five, the second sleep phenomenon. We need to pause the linear progression of hours to look at a glitch in history. If you wake up in the middle of the night around two or 3 a.m. and feel frustrated, you might actually be reverting to the natural human default. Before the Industrial Revolution and the widespread adoption of artificial gas lighting, humans did not sleep in one eight-hour block. Historical records, diaries, and medical texts from the medieval period through the 1700s describe first sleep and second sleep, or dead sleep and morning sleep. People would go to bed around sundown, sleep for roughly four hours, and then wake up around midnight. They would stay awake for an hour or two, praying, reading, having sex, or visiting neighbors, and then return to bed for a second sleep of another four hours. The hidden advantage of this biphasic pattern was hormonally distinct. During that midnight waking period, the brain produced high levels of prolactin, a hormone associated with relaxation and a distinct state of peaceful awareness that is rare in the modern world. It was a meditative, quiet hour that served as a buffer between the unconscious and the conscious. 
Modern insomnia is often just second sleep, trying to break through the artificial constraints of our 9 to 5 society. We force ourselves to condense our rest into a single efficient block to serve the capitalist clock. Recognizing this pattern changes the framing of waking up from a disorder to an evolutionary echo. If you find yourself awake at 3 a.m., you aren't broken, you're just medieval. The advantage here is utilizing that time for quiet, low-stimulus contemplation, the prolactin peak, rather than stressing about being awake, which spikes cortisol and kills the sleep drive. 6. The Memory Save Game Mechanic In the 6 to 7 hour range, we start seeing the activation of the brain's save game protocol. This is memory consolidation, and it is far more complex than just remembering things. During the day, new information is stored in the hippocampus. Think of the hippocampus as your computer's RAM, random access memory. It is fast, easy to access, but volatile and limited in capacity. It gets overwritten easily. If you don't offload that data, it disappears. Sleep is the transfer mechanism. Specifically, during stage 2 sleep, which occurs throughout the night but becomes more dominant in this 6-7 to seven hour window, the brain generates sleep spindles, bursts of brain activity that act as data couriers. These spindles facilitate the transfer of memories from the fragile hippocampus to the neocortex, which acts as the hard drive. The hidden advantage of hitting this specific hour count is the preservation of motor skills and procedural memory. If you are learning to play the piano, or coding, or trying to perfect a golf swing, the actual learning doesn't happen while you practice. It happens during the sixth and seventh hour of sleep. Studies show that if you practice a skill and then get six hours of sleep, you will perform it faster and more accurately the next morning without any additional practice. Your brain has literally rewired the neural pathways while you are unconscious. You are upgrading your software. If you cut sleep short at five hours, you effectively corrupt the save file. You might remember the what, declarative memory, but you lose the how procedural fluency. 7. The Emotional Thermostat As we push toward the 7 to 8 hour mark, we encounter the heavy REM cycles. While deep sleep dominates the first half of the night, REM cycles dominate the second half. If you wake up after 6 hours with an alarm, you are surgically removing the longest, most critical REM cycle of the night. The hidden advantage of this late morning sleep is emotional calibration. REM sleep is the only time during the 24-hour cycle that your brain is completely devoid of noradrenaline, a stress molecule. It is a chemically safe environment. In this stress-free simulation, your brain reactivates emotional memories and processes them. It strips away the visceral, painful, emotional charge from the memory, leaving behind just the factual narrative. This is why a traumatic event feels overwhelming on day one, but manageable on day seven. You have literally slept on it. Without this specific seven to eight hour phase, the brain cannot strip the anxiety from the memory. You wake up chemically reactive. Your amygdala, the threat detection center, remains 60% more reactive than a well-rested brain. You perceive neutral faces as hostile. You interpret emails as aggressive. You are socially paranoid. The advantage of the full eight hours isn't just feeling rested. It is the ability to navigate complex social hierarchies without perceiving threats that aren't there. It is the biological basis of emotional intelligence. You are defragging your trauma. 8. The Testosterone and Growth Hormone Spike Now we enter the realm of the athlete, the 8 to 9 hour window. This is where physical reconstruction happens. For men specifically, sleep duration is the single most potent regulator of testosterone. A study from the University of Chicago found that men who slept five hours a night for one week had testosterone levels of someone 10 to 15 years their senior. By simply missing the eight to nine hour window, they biologically aged their endocrine system by a decade. The hidden advantage here is the massive pulse of human growth hormone, or HGH. 
While HGH is released in pulses throughout the day, the largest surge, roughly 70% of your total daily output, occurs during the first phase of slow wave sleep. However, the receptor sensitivity and the systemic repair processes require the full duration of the night to maximize uptake. This is why LeBron James and Roger Federer sleep 10 plus hours. It's not a luxury, it's a performance enhancing drug that is legal. At 8 to 9 hours, you are maximizing protein synthesis. Your muscles mimic the micro tears from your workout and rebuild them stronger. Your skin generates collagen more efficiently. If you are training hard in the gym but sleeping 6 hours, you are effectively driving a race car with the parking brake on. The gains don't happen in the gym, they happen in the 8th hour of sleep. This is the only time your body switches from catabolic, breaking down, to anabolic, building up. 9. The Eureka Void There is a strange creative advantage that lives on the edges of high volume sleep, 9 hours. This is the utilization of hypnagogia, the state entering sleep, and hypnopompia, the state leaving sleep. Throughout history, the eureka moments of science and art have often emerged from the drift of a long sleep. Dmitry Mendeleev envisioned the periodic table in a dream. Paul McCartney woke up with the melody to yesterday fully formed in his head. The mechanism here is associative distality. When you're awake, your brain is logical and linear. It connects A to B. It filters out irrelevant connections to keep you focused. But during the long drifting phases of late morning sleep, that filter is turned off. The brain starts connecting A to Z. It tests bizarre illogical associations. This is the hidden advantage of lingering in sleep or allowing for a nine hour night. You're giving your brain time to play in the sandbox. It is running simulations. It is taking the problem you were stuck on yesterday and running it through a nonlinear algorithm. If you wake up abruptly to an alarm at hour 7, you snap the brain back into linear logic instantly. You kill the solution in the womb. The 9-hour sleeper, who wakes naturally, allows the brain to carry that impossible connection from the dream state into the waking state. It is a creativity hack that requires the luxury of time. 10. The Depression Loop Finally, we hit the upper limit, 10 to 12 hours, the sleeping beauty zone. While this range is necessary for teenagers whose brains are literally under construction or people recovering from severe illness, for an average adult, this zone hides a dark disadvantage known as the depression loop. Sleep scientists have found a U-shaped curve for mortality and health. Sleeping too little is deadly, but sleeping too much is also correlated with higher risks of diabetes, heart disease, and specifically depression. The hidden mechanism here is inflammation. Chronic oversleeping increases markers of systemic inflammation like C-reactive protein and creates a sense of lethargy known as sleep drunkenness. But more dangerously, it can become a retreat mechanism. In the 10 plus hour range, sleep stops being restorative and starts being an avoidance strategy. The brain spends too much time in REM, which can actually increase depressive rumination in some clinical cases. This is why wake therapy, sleep deprivation, is sometimes used as a temporary antidepressant. It shocks the system out of the sluggish, over-REM cycled state. The hidden advantage of knowing this limit is realizing that sleep has a point of diminishing returns. Like hydration, you need enough to survive and thrive, but you can drown if you overdo it. The 12-hour sleep is not a supercharge. It is a signal that the system is failing to boot up correctly. Unless you are healing a broken bone or fighting a virus, the 12th hour is where the glitch turns malicious.